You're listening to PDR Tool Talk, all about PDR stories, tools, and techniques. For the thousands in attendance, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Welcome to PDR Tool Time. This is episode 121. I'm John Rinstrom, along with Vince D'Alessandro and Daniel Grom. Hey, what's, what's happening? happening? How you guys doing? Doing good. Uh, all right. Well, that was today- John's first first time uh, introducing the show. Good job. Almost nailed it, even. Oh, <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll try it. I'll try it. Okay. Uh, this is why we don't do TV. Right. Yeah. No, it's good. <laughs> how was how was your week? Oh, my week was was. You're awesome. not even working, so <laughs> I'm not even going to ask you. Screw you. We, uh, we went all around. We had a ton of fun hitting some distilleries in Louisville, and now we're up here. We're going to spend this holiday weekend in Niagara Falls. Niagara. Uh, Are you going to do the barrel and go over the falls? No, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that's a really fun ride. It's only yeah, like got, 10 bucks. Yeah. This homie don't swim. He more like sinks. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, they claim it's the rocks in my head that just pull me under all the time. Oh, but. sure. <laughs> yeah. I got a, I got an email from the other guy, uh, some guy out here the other day. Hey, you want to take surfing lessons? I'm like, no, I'm from Chicago, man. I'm a sinker, not a floater. Lake Michigan is like an ocean, but we didn't spend any time in a, in a lake at all. I could barely swim. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, I I, I do not tread water well. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, huh. no, my week was good. I uh, yeah. yeah, it's been a little bit dreary around here, so it was time to catch up on a lot of stuff going on. I got a, a lot of new tools in as well. Ninety nine point nine percent of them I paid for them too. For all the skeptics out there, I had a buddy of mine going out to Ultra Dent Tools today, so I handed him about a dozen of my tools, including some new ones, to get the octagons put on. You're, you're taking a page out of Mike's Mike's book, huh? Yeah, I'm taking a page out of Mike's book. Especially, I, I the only reason why I'm doing it though is because of the ratcheting handles. You know, with the ratcheting interchangeable handles that Ultra has now. Yeah. I mean, dude, I sent him PDR finesse. I sent him tools from Europe. I, I, a whole bunch of different tools and they'll put the I'm, octagons on them i've yeah. got a friend who sent all of his tools off from every company out there had them all put those adjustable handles on them. yeah they don't care they'll do it for you yeah. yeah it's awesome because i mean when you if you really compare their ratcheting handle to everybody else's because they're making it in-house and everybody else is doing it off the shelf it's way tighter yeah. It's just it's got a lot less play, and my one of my favorite ones is a, a finesse tool, PDR finesse. It's so old, it's. I mean, if you felt it, you would laugh at me that you, I'm still using it because it's it's got so much play in it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I got it. I got to do something about it. Yeah, send it off. Have it have it yeah. chopped down, and, and I just don't want to be without that tool. You know, it's like yeah. it's my no, one of my favorite door tools, and I use it every freaking day. Dude, so I was in uh, a panic myself. That's, Right. Yeah. Yesterday, I'm like, uh, I'm gonna be without these tools for a day. It's like, oh my god, what am I gonna do? It's like, uh, what if I get this done or that? I'm like, you know what? Just take them. <laughs> yeah. So I'll bite the bullet, man. Yeah. I'll have them back tomorrow and good to go. But what uh, other tools did you get? Well, you know what? I got a handful of standliner tools. All did right. you? I did. Um, what'd you get? Well, I got the killer wheel, the forty inch killer wheel. God. That, that's my I, right now, guys. That's my favorite thing that he makes. Now, it, I've only seen that in photos. So, is the end of that just at a, like a, a forty-five degree angle, and along with the whale tail head? No, it's got a slow curve. Okay, it, it's got a slow curve. It's almost like a rod with a slow curve, and then the it's it's almost like a whale. It's almost like a spoon. 
it's it's rounded it's a rounded whale tail it's thick that the whole idea of it is it's for creases you get it on a crease and you you rock the handle back and forth and you're you're walking it down the it just walks down the crease and it you literally don't put any effort into it you're not you you just put some pressure on it and you're rocking it with your wrist hmm. and it walks down the the crease and it takes out the the crease without any zipper and it it makes me laugh every time i use it yeah. i mean i just start giggling like a silly <laughs> little girl so how's that compare to say the pirate hooks you guys have the pirate hooks don't you yeah i have the pirate hook i have the shorter version i'd say it's very similar i've been using it I've only had it for four days now, so I haven't really put it to the test. But what I will say is I put it down a door. I put it down a front door on a BMW X1, and the dent was right underneath the mirror. So it had open access from the window being all the way down so I could get such a big uh, you know, swooping tool down there. And it was right on the body line. And a dent like that, I normally grab my ultra double bend, and I sit there with a the soft tip, and then I'll switch off to a sharper tip and finish it off. It's a little bit more of a complicated dent because you usually get a crown above the body line and it takes you, you know, it'll take you 15, 20 minutes, maybe even longer if it's sharper. So the killer whale, I actually, I videotaped it and I had it roughed up within like three seconds and I never even pushed on it. You know, I put pressure on it and then I rolled it back and forth and next thing you know, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, holy crap, I can't believe that dent went that quick. And I had a gentleman that was watching over me that's another pdr technician that actually brought me the tool to try out and he was like holy crap i can't believe you did that so you know and all i had to do i did have to grab another tool to finish it off just to pick out little lows but yeah I sharp mean, tip yeah a little sharp tip little blunt blunt tip actually but what's amazing about it is there's no there's no sharp high spots from it and it's minimal effort you just lean into it just barely pressure the, the challenge is you you really have to almost have somebody show you how to use it the first time. Once you, once you see it and, and you get it, you're like, okay, you're off to the races, but I don't know. I I'm hoping our listeners kind of, kind of grasp the concept, but cause I didn't until I was at MTE and, and, um, Casimir had, had taken, over for me and showed me that and that and the thing on the pirate hook was the same thing uh bryce kelly showed me how to use that and that one you're it's mainly for like your front fenders so it's a little bit shorter tool it's got a little bit different angles and but the same same kind of rocking motion to take out creases but the difference with it is you're supposed to be able to use the tip which is a sharper tip it's got a big blunt heel and I've actually started using it. So I'm starting to play with the, the other aspects of what you can do. So you could be up in a front fender and you might have part of a crease and maybe a dent next to it and maybe another softer dent. And you could hit all three with that one tool Without just changing. by shifting what end you're using and, and, the, and the way you're using it. And that's all of the killer whale. Okay. No, that that was, no, that was the pirate that's hook. Pirate hook. Okay. Now, now, John, All if right. you could imagine this, the closest thing that I could relate it to, and you're you're from a body shop background, it's like having a dolly in your hand, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it, in a PDR tool, so you have there's a curve to it, so you know the Martin dolly that looks like it's not it's not I don't even know how to describe that side. The old uh, heel dolly. The heel dolly, you know, and it's like having a heel dolly. And you're on a, the end of a PDR tool. So, you know, when you're working a dolly on, on the inside of a panel and you're slapping it with a hammer and shrinking metal and, and body work, you're kind of able to do the same thing on the backside, but you have control in a rod. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Interesting. Yeah. It's, you know what? It's, it's something you got to get in your hands and you got to play around with. But the end results, you're, you're taking out a dent faster, cleaner. Um, less stress on your body. Yeah. Less stress on your body. Cause, right. cause he's a, uh, he's not a, a big guy. He's a pretty small guy actually. Kaz, um, yeah. yeah. And so I think he, he, 
came out of, came out of this with necessity of trying to figure out ways of making it work for them. That the good thing is, is for the women in our industry, they should really start looking at Steinliner to, that don't have the strength that that some of these guys do, and because they're yeah, already yeah. compensating. You know, his, his tools are kind of designed more technique versus brute strength. Sure. Right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now I will say this. I'm a door dinger. I don't do a lot of hail damage. I stay here in California. 40 inch killer whale is not exactly a tool that I'm going to use all the time because of the length of it. So what I did was that was one of the tools I sent to ultra it and I had to cut down to 30 inches. By doing that, Ultra sells extensions. So if I ever need it longer, back to 40, I could just drop it back to 40 or longer. Exactly. So sure. I yeah. think the killer whale is really going to benefit the hail damage as well. You know, And, John, I, I would urge you to buy one and try it out. In fact, you're, you're in Niagara Falls. You're really close to where Thomas ships from right now. Maybe uh, have him come across the border and deliver one to you by You need hand. to do it. A- a live report. <laughs> yeah, go live on Facebook. <laughs> but, it, you know, I agree with you on one of the things I saw him doing, though, at, at Mobile Tech, at, at PDR College at their seminar, is he was taking that long tool. He wasn't holding on to the handle. He was holding on to the middle of the shaft. He was choking up on it. He would use the tool, a longer tool, just by choking up on it, which... I don't personally like, but I noticed that's what he was doing. Yeah. But I wonder, you know, most of our traditional tools um, require a bit of brute strength in that. And then choking up on a, on a half inch rod or smaller, uh, it just slips too much. You know, you want the handle. Exactly. That that's yeah. Yeah. And uh, if his tool isn't, isn't designed around that brute force, then yeah, you can choke up on it and still be able to get that manipulation without. So I, I just ordered I just ordered a shorter version of the pirate hook in a smaller diameter. So that came up on their page. That was actually pretty cheap. It was 125 bucks for that tool. So I just ordered that one. So I'll report back on that. Then they're supposed to have a smaller diameter, shorter killer whale. Yeah. And that's that's what I want to go down through windows cuz I was working big. on I was working on a crease on a door. I took off the belt molding and then I got my stool and I'm working with this big old tool down the door. <laughs> I'm standing on a stool. I was going to make that tool work because yeah. it was a perfect crease to do 40, it on. 40 sure. inches is pretty long to go into yeah. the, the window. It's yeah. really too long. <laughs> it is. And, and I choked up on it and it, it still, it was rolling on me and that was uncomfortable. Yeah. And then the other technique he does, he, he uses it. He, he hits it like, like a blending hammer on the back side, he he bounces the tool inside the panel. I started playing around with that technique, and I don't I don't know. I'm not. I I can do that with my four foot green handled dent craft a little bit, especially when I'm on say a quarter panel in through a headlight opening and through the but tail got, light opening. The panel's got to be stiff though. Yeah, you know? yeah. It doesn't work on everything and only some specific dents. But yeah, I can. Yeah. You could kind of ratchet it, sort of like you were you were tapping back a high spot but yeah huh. yeah well and i got a snake tool i got a, a smaller diameter seven eighths diameter snake tool that that works really well i got the weird one that looks like a hook like a question mark and i'm not 100 percent sold on that either just yet well like the snake tool i didn't know how to use that tool until mike's showed that video did you see his video that he did yeah i wish he did it with the fog board though so i could actually see what he was see doing. what he's doing <laughs> but he's he gonna was... do it again he's gonna do it again with the fog with a okay uh, a hybrid yeah but just just understanding he he was taking the snake tool he was working a crease with the snake tool crossing it i wouldn't have ever thought of it that way yeah personally now i'm kind of excited to try that technique and if it doesn't hail worth a crap anytime soon. I'm just going to drive out to your place, Daniel, and, <laughs> and just give this stuff a try on some door dance here. <laughs> yeah. We'd have fun, man. Well, you only I'm have 3,000 miles to get there. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so a hop, skip, and so, jump. That's cut, right. Cut through well, Canada. I'll stop, I'll stop in South Dakota and pick up the mail on the way through. Oh, there you go. That's a good excuse. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, did, now didn't you get some other stuff? What we what other stuff do we get in that's new? We got the hammers. We got yeah, we, we got, got um we got hammers. Carbon Tech hammer. Bryce Rockhill. So and oddly enough to our listener listeners, we had Hudson on last week and we were talking off the air about hammers and we had a fantastic conversation about hammers. And it was it was honest. It was it was raw, honest. It wasn't biased at all. And we wanted to have this discussion today uh, between the three of us. We want to revisit it and have an honest discussion because there are a crap ton of hammers out there. Yeah. Yeah. So and I carry as everybody knows, I'm the hail guy. So I carry I have six different hammers with I've got a Mac code dead blow. That's always that's been my go to for tapping down my tap downs forever uh it's what i trained with it's what i've used it's a 20 ounce dead blow it's worked well for me i've gotten a gentle touch but man and then i've got a load of other blending hammers i've got the tactical hammer i've got dent man's with the golf grip i've got drew's tools i've got shane's jacks and i have a dent technology and I like a longer hammer. My dead blow is my shortest one. My go-to every day, I, uh, I grab my dent you, technology. You know what? I got to say, I, it bothers me when I see guys using the, the dead blows. I, you know why? I, I don't think you, it's not giving you a true touch of what, what a regular hammer does. But I and, use it with a stainless, uh, again, what I trained on, I still have, uh, if you guys remember the company Inventure mm -hmm. from out of Florida, I've got one of his stainless tap downs, and those two are my go together joint combination for the bulk of my tap down. But I don't, it, it was years ago, we would use the dead blow on some heavy crown work, you know, and, and roughing everything out, and then you'd go back in and fix them all. Man, with the blending hammers we have now, uh, I don't, it, the only thing it gets used for is tap down, and it gets, it's mostly habitual, quite yeah. honestly. Yeah. Well, I got to be they, honest it, with you, John. I I, I use a, a dent technology hammer too with, with titanium tip. Now I did switch it over to Dave Strain's new forgot uh, the, the name knocker. The knocker. The knocker. Yes. Yeah. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. It took over my titanium. Now I like a flat tip on my blending hammer. Yeah. Um, but I actually have each of those five hammers set up differently for different. So different things. Now you're using that as you're you're turning it over and you're blending with that new tip, right? Yes. Yes. My question is this, is because it's such a small diameter round, are you ever hitting that edge and surprisingly? Not no, because I've always used the mushroom titanium. So the bar, the larger head, I, I, the smaller ones, I have that set up. I use that one on the, uh, generally on the dent man hammer to get me a little more pinpoint, but no, uh, it's just, it's zeros right in there. The way now, the one dent, dent technology hammer that I do have is got the black ball on the end of it in the aluminum cup. I like the way it fits into my the palm of my hand, my index finger. I put straight down the bone of the tool, and I use my index finger to drive. And with that uh, edgy tip on there, man, it just uh, it surprised me. I was going, I was blending through my rail stuff even faster. Well, everybody that's got it on Facebook says they love it. Everybody's yeah. raving about it. So it's definitely a winner that he's I got, got it loaded there. To me first. Keegan McManus got one and he said, John, you got to try this. And he came into the shop while I was working for him and I screwed it onto my hammer where I was real comfortable with it. Wow. How can, you know, it, it was like a whole new hammer to me. You know, it was like, man, that's, that's great. And then so the, I've got, I, he gave me one of his, uh, the finger, he gave me the finger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the, the ding ring or, or yeah. Yeah. And I, see guys. and I actually had to, I had to modify it. I had to take it to the bench grinder because he had a waffle pattern on it. Right. I use a titanium hammer. It would have marred up my titanium hammer. So I sanded that off and just made it smooth. I think he, he, I don't think he should have done the waffle. I, you don't need a waffle when you're hitting with a hammer. You know, I don't, understand what he was doing there so what's your go-to hammer though daniel it's um a shane jacks it's a shane no. jacks well it's it's the well, shane wait. jacks modified <laughs> so yeah, i took his handle. so i took it took his hammer his longest one 
and I cut the handle off and I threaded right where I cut off. I threaded it and I put a ball on there. But when I was down at Ultra, took the ball off and I dipped it. Then I put a, a bicycle foam handle on it. And the reason I do that is because I can choke up on it and use that as a short hammer or go back and hold on to the ball. So it's really two lengths of hammer in one. Okay. And, but I have, I mean, I have everybody's hammer, I have everybody's, but that combination, that length, so it's 18 inches long. And then I have the flatty on it. And then I have an R96 on the other side. It's perf. It's, it's so well balanced compared to every other hammer. Like I, I did the same setup as a backup hammer for my, my truck, but it's a de- dent technology. It's a carbon fiber same length, but it doesn't feel the same balance as the Shane Jacks. Okay. But you know, Daniel, that doesn't count. You can't tell people about that hammer because no one could buy that hammer. <laughs> yes, they can. They can buy and cut the handle off and thread yeah, it and do what I did. But it's not that hard. Post a picture of it. No one's going to be yeah, able to yeah. duplicate what you did. I'd like with to that see hammer. a picture of that. Now, <clears throat> Shane Jacks hammer is a great hammer. I like it. Um, the only thing is for me and the way I blend, it's a little too heavy being the all aluminum, but I do have a large soft based mushroom tip. Then I also have another edgy, the pirate leg on the opposite side of that, but that is my go-to crown remover now. Hammer. And when you say it's too heavy, do you, are you, what, what, what tip are you putting on there? Uh, uh, even with the titanium tip, I found that the the hammer in itself was just, I like it super, super light on my blending hammer. I, I mean, I, I'm going ultra light uh, on mine and I just kind of flick it and let it ratchet back off of the panel. It seems to work best for me. Now yeah, I know yeah, I'm, I'm with you too. I like things. I know other guys like a, a little bit heavier hammer, but I was just not as precise with the heavier one. And that's where I come in. I like a heavier hammer. Because most of the, the dents that I do are smashes, big sure. crowns and big smiles and everything. And it's like, you know, if I sit there with a the light hammer, I'm not getting anywhere. You know, yeah. and, and I've, it's not like blending's new. We've been blending for 20 years. So my first go-to blending hammer was my craftsman hammer. You know, whether it was the red side or the yellow side, 99% of the time it was the red side. On, on the onset of all these blending hammers, you know, and, and making it, fashionable and, and out in the open that we all blend. Uh, I started looking at others. I do not own a Shane Jacks. It wasn't very appealing to me because it was too light. So I'm, I'm more along the lines of a, of a heavier hammer, but I do have a lighter one and that's the Dent Technology one that I, that I got. And I use that with the titanium tip. And then I have on the other side, I have one of Woody Koss's uh, match grade tips on the other side. Okay. You know, I yeah. have, my long hammer is my, a dent man hammer, you know, with the golf handle. Yeah. You know, that's my longer one. And that one I have set up like Daniel does with the, I don't have the R96, but I do have the flatty, the Drew's tools flatty on that. My problem with the Drew's tools flatty, and I'm just being honest that his titanium is soft. You know, there's different grades of titanium out there and there, there was, it does mar, you know, if you drop it or, or throw, throw tools on it, it's going to, it's going to mar. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's my only gripe about it. Yeah. But, you know, with Bryce Rockhill hammer that Carbon Tech just released, I actually like that hammer. My only negative thing about that hammer is the ball on the end. For some reason, the ball just I it doesn't sit comfortably, comfortably in my hand, whether it's because it's raw rubber or and it's not smooth. Something is just off about it. But I mean, it's a it's a crown killer on big dents. Oh, I can imagine it is because it's got some, it's got some heft behind it. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how heavy it is, but I, I'm pretty sure it's over 20 ounce. No, it's not. I me- I really? weighed it. Yeah. My Craftsman okay. hammer with my modification on the handle with a grip is 10, 10 something ounces. And the Carbon Tech came in, actually it was 12. Carbon Tech came in at 10 ounces, but it's all head heavy. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's yep. so if it feels, it might feel unbalanced to some people. Well, that's the way my Drews is. Um, my Drews, I've got a Drews uh, Carbon Tech. It was his, I think it's his first generation Carbon Tech. Um, I actually wanted his wooden handle. 
because uh, the first guy that loaned me a true blending hammer was a Drews with the wooden handle. And I thought it was phenomenally balanced. And then I got it with the carbon fiber handle. It was a little bit too head heavy. Now, I worked with it. I worked with it for a couple of years as my only blending hammer um, until I got a few of these others. And I still run uh, one of the a little bit deeper dome on a titanium tip on that one. And then on my dent mans, I run the flatter titanium mushroom head and then the R4 with the cherry cap on the opposite side of that one. Yeah, you'd, I got to be honest. I, I'm kind of scared to blend with an R4. I'm I'm terrified of ripping through a, a cherry cap. Yeah. Uh, it's never bothered me. No, I. But if man, I've abused some of those, and uh, I know when that cherry cap is going to let her go. <laughs> yeah, because as uh, cheap as I am, I, I freaking hold on to them forever, even if they're split and stuff. It's like you know, and I have them on all my knockdowns. You know, I have <laughs> cherry tip on my knockdown, but I won't put it on a blending hammer. I, for some reason, it scares me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, the only hammer that I have that I don't use as an actual hammer that often is a tactical hammer. I always have it apart, and I have it bolted in, holding it into a, a taillight opening and running rods through it. Yeah, I, it, uh, I agree with you. I, I, I used it for a while until other hammers came out, and it's mainly my leverage tool. I use that that and the edgy hanger almost yeah. exclusively now. I use it every once in a while. It's uh, You know, like I, I try to divide my hammers in, into two categories, my my go-to everyday use hammer and then my specialty hammers. And that's what I put like the Bryce, Bryce Rock Rock Hill hammer, put that in the category of a a specialty hammer because I think it's too heavy. The dome is too aggressive. It works fantastic on aluminum. Aluminum. Oh man, it kills aluminum. Yeah. It's perfect. It's, it's my go-to aluminum hammer now, but it's about two inches shorter than I like my handle. I would like to have that a little bit longer and I think it would balance it out a little bit better if it was a little bit longer. I'm sure if you talk to Todd, he could probably make an extension for it because the, the screw on tip for the ball, it would probably accept an extension. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, So that's, that's my only thing is I I just don't think it's like an everyday hammer for myself. Yeah. yeah, and I agree with you on the ball. That so I have three different type of rubber balls that I've got. I've gotten over the years, and the one I like, it's it's got kind of a texture, and it's almost a little bit. It's not as rubbery. It's more vinyl like, right? Is that what you like, mm-hmm. Vince? Yeah, the tactical ball. Yeah, and those are. I think those are the best ones. Yeah. Okay. Now, like the tactical hammer, here's here's some place that uh, it does kind of come in handy. And I guess uh, a semi-tech tip as well. But uh, because the head on the tactical hammer is so large, if you put like pirate leg or uh, one of your sharper tap-down tips that you, that, that you have polished, not one that you've been pushing with, and you've done your glue pulls along the back of a cab on a pickup from hail damage that hits that spot right below the back window just above the bed, it's impossible to get in there and have your light on it and be able to see and reach in with the tap down and tap that glue pull spot back. Sure. Yep. But you take that tactical hammer because that head is so extra wide and you got to put a flat tip on the opposite side of that, hold its handle, and you can rest that against the bed, oh. the top of the bed, and then tap the hammer with another hammer. Go. Yeah, yeah. And you can – then you're, you're staying back there far enough to be able to see your high spot and knock that back. Oh, and, that's a good – Tech tip right there. I, I tend to use that the tactical as an extended tap down type of hammer because you can put those different angles on there yeah. of the handle and you can get in some really tight areas like you're talking about, like underneath the mirror or when you got something else in the way and yeah. it really solves that problem. It's definitely one to, to have in your toolbox for sure. Yeah. Sure. Can- I just use it as everything other than a hammer. Yeah, same here. Uh, even the the what was the Punisher version, the smaller version of that 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 works as well as a knockdown. Yeah, actually, I like the Punisher better. I I just wish it had one more threaded hole on where the nose is. Well, come on now, Daniel, well, you're the king you... of the bench. <laughs> yeah, I told John to do that. Modify it. Well, modify it's... it. 
<laughs> I would have to have a drill press to be able to do that one. Yeah. It's, it's really thin. And yeah. if you screwed up and you didn't get it straight, man, you'd be drilling through the side of it. Yep. Fairly, so. fairly quick. So, all right. Well, that covers our hammers and uh stand liner conversation which has been fantastic i do have to let our listening audience know that i actually have a huge sale going on and it's going to start memorial day weekend this is going to drop on tuesday so it's already going to be in the the midst of it but magnatech matt is going to be on sale cheaper than ever before and whoever buys one will actually get their name in the drawing for the contest that we're having the contest we're having is two things. There's a first place winner and second place winner. First place winner, ready for a drum roll. Give me a drum roll. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> first place gets a whole set of tequila tools. All 12. Oh, whoa. Oh. And it's, it's and not. I already spent the money to buy them. Oh, see? <laughs> do, I, do I get to enter? You can if you buy a mat. <laughs> family and affiliates of pdr tool time are not eligible to apply for this contest exactly <laughs> please see the website for further rules and details <laughs> and thank second, you for that dis disclaimer th yeah I, i'll have to listen back to that and copy that into the disclaimer <laughs> but uh thanks john second place is a carbon tech never loose knuckle so magnetic knuckle oh, nice, nice. So, oh, yeah my favorite so. thing man and what are good prizes? Yeah, so those are the two prizes that we have. Everyone that buys one is going to get their name entered in the raffle. And I'm actually going to hold, seeing that it's such our our biggest sale we've ever done, which is 25% off, uh, wow. and and free shipping. So that makes it the mat is going to be about just under nine or just under a hundred dollars. About ninety seven dollars is the value that you're getting for a mat that with, I normally ship, sell for 137 plus shipping. And with free shipping, you know, guys from Siberia will be ordering them by the truckload. U.S. only. <laughs> U.S. only. So What about its outlining territories? Outlining territories could go to AnsonPDR.com or to TDNTools.com and buy their tools there or buy their mats there. And they're not running the sale. It's on the website only. On the website. On the website, U.S. people only. Get on it because I'm actually going to be in Texas at the end of next week, and I'm going to do the drawing live at Anson PDR on Friday. So I'm All right, what's that website? The website is Magnatech, which is spelled M-A-G-N-A-T-E-K, Matt, M-A-T, dot com, magnatechmat.com. So go on there, buy a mat. It's the cheapest it's ever going to be. It's never going to be this cheap again. You're basically getting it for wholesale, so with free shipping. So that sounds great, man. yeah. And if you guys don't have a mat, man, get a mat for right? sure. You have yeah, like I, five now. I don't really you? use it a lot when I'm glue pulling roofs. I appreciate I'm it. Glue pulling rails, I put it up there on the roof, and uh, I mindlessly set my hammer, my slide hammer, everything up on the roof while I'm glue pulling a rail. I'm just so in tune with that, and uh, I just started putting that Magnatech down. In place of, I used to put a towel down. Yeah, but uh, I've dented a couple with my slide hammer. I, well, honestly. yeah, you know what? Oddly enough, Daniel dropped a, a a slide hammer on a roof, and it landed on the Magnatech mat, and he immediately lifted it up. I remember you telling me that story, Daniel. Yeah, looking for a dent, and said, like, "Oh, good, the mat <laughs> took care of it." <laughs> yep. Yeah. So get yourself one of those. We want to thank you guys all for listening. Daniel, you got anything else to add? Yeah, buy some hog glue, man. And, oh, yeah. and then uh, send me a video if it you was. like it. You know, I want, I want to hear from guys what they're doing. So I just got, I got to share this video. I just got it today. I haven't been able to put it, post it. Jonathan, I, I can't even say his last name. Do you know? Uh, I don't even know from how Kecko? to say his last name. Kecko, Jonathan? Yeah. 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 So he's using my glue and he's, using a, a frame machine and hydraulically pulling a dent out with the hog glue and wait until you see this video i was like oh my god it's so good it sets up it's it sets up hard it pulls strong well um, the, with the clean release too that's yeah the that's the that's the best thing about it is it comes off really clean you don't have to spend a lot of time peeling that stuff off it's got a lot more elasticity than a lot of glues out there. And you'll notice that. And that, that was by design. I, my, my thought process was when you're doing it on like a tank that has a lot more clear on it. And if you got some more elasticity, 
it's less likely to pull the, the paint off. Is Not shocking the, the paint quite so heavy. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So that was the thought process on that. But it, it just has a, a bigger benefit when you're doing bigger dents and using those big Kiko tabs. Those things are great. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, well, cool. All right, John, you have anything else to add? Uh, no, keep an eye on your uh, updates for Mobile Tech RX. We're getting re ready to release a few new bug fixes. Uh, we've got a couple of small releases coming out pretty soon before we do a really big one for this summer. That's so. good. Everyone should be running Mobile Tech RX. Best invention <laughs> of the 21st century for PDR techs, Mobile Tech RX. <laughs> That's right. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in for another show. Remember this. Level up your tools. Don't do anything stupid. And join the revolution. <laughs> <laughs>